started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. Today we have Arshna Sham. She is a health intuitive and is here today to talk to us about healing ourselves and using the tools within us. Archna, welcome. Today when I was doing a little prep work, thinking about what I wanted to talk about, the thing that keeps coming up is like, we all have the answers. Like a lot of us right now in this season that we're in feel kind of stagnant because I mean, we're going on three years of like this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, <laughs> we all know what you're referring to. <laughs> and so I feel like a lot of the people and women that listen to the Make Life Fun podcast could really relate with that feeling stagnant and knowing that people are saying you have the answers, like you can feel better, you could heal yourself, but it's like the outside world is so much. Yeah. And also the biggest question that comes for people is how and what, Mm -hmm. and you know, it's like, there must be an easier way. I don't want to climb the mountain. You know, it's like, Mm -hmm. those are all those different pieces and I can totally relate to all of that. (laughs) Been there way too many times. (laughs) So yeah. So yeah. Welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so excited to have you here. Archana. Self-acceptance, you bring up such a great point because That's literally the key to almost anything and everything. I'm a fan of the quote that I kind of made up at some level, but I like it anyway. Whatever we resist persists, right? So whether it's health, whether it's weight, whether it's work or whatever it is, the more we fight it, the more energy we give to it. And it gets that much harder to change. And I've seen that so much in my own journey. I'm in a much better place today. I I love what I do. And I love being in this body. I connect with myself, all of that. Today I can go, hi, yeah, good job, my body. I can actually say that. But if you were to ask me the rest of my life that has led up to it, I hated being in this body. I did not know what the fuck I was doing here. And it was like, why why these toes? Why these legs? And why is this, you know, so out of proportion? And why doesn't this look right? I mean, we are so good at looking at the mirror and pecking at everything that's not right. And we are, we don't need training for that, right? We are experts at doing that. Yeah, I'm no exception. Been there for way too long. And then along the way, the spiritual journey started. And then my own health challenges were like all over town. My mom who passed away 2014, December, 10 to 15 years before that, she went through a, a plethora of health challenges that I would not even, you know, wish for an enemy, to be mm-hmm. honest. It was finally breast cancer and pneumonia that took her. But what I'm trying to say is so many health challenges and I had my own story come up. It was like I had asthma, I had bronchitis, I had weight issues, I had migraines, I had issues with my shoulders, I had a bag that I carried for the longest time. It was like one after another and I had so much fatigue and Everywhere it was a roller coaster, personal, career, relationship, you know, it was like this perfect, what what should I call it? A recipe for disaster, but for lack of a better word. So that was what was really simmering for a while. And I tried to be normal. I tried to fit into what I was supposed to be, supposed to do, really gave it a very honest shot for a very long time. And then I just said, "Mm, screw it, because not going to happen. So that was the most liberating moment of my life when I said, eh, I'm done, right? This is who I am. This is what it's going to be. Because the moment I did that, my healing got so much better. My journey started to improve. My Everything just changed after that. That's why I just wanted to touch on that self-acceptance. I can so relate to it. And that is the hardest piece mm-hmm. because right. it also involves 
a level of forgiveness that we don't want to do for ourselves. We can forgive the whole world. Oh, maybe they weren't thinking, oh, it's okay. You know, it's all right. But when it comes to us, there's a million reasons why we don't deserve to be forgiven. Duh, right? I mean, the brain is so good at that. So there's that element that I teach uh, in my work as well as this whole forgiveness piece, because that's what really helped me come out of the depression and anger I went through when my mom passed. So this was literally the thing uh, that pulled me out. So it's, it's just been quite a wild ride. And I will say this as a bit of an umbrella. And you let me know where you want to go from here. When I started off, right, I didn't have any magic wand or secret potion or any of those things, to be honest, at the same time, I like to call what I went through as hell on steroids. Mm-hmm. Everybody has had their share. But as I've come along, I've gathered quite a few tools, quite a few really handy dandy stuff that mm-hmm. now I look back and I wish somebody had told me or somebody had given me some of these as pointers, mm-hmm. you know, or somebody was there to just say, oh, yeah, this is normal. It's going to be OK. Keep going. But A lot of it, we have to stumble, fall, burn, and, you know, kind of figure out on our own. So what I will say is I didn't have any edge when I started and I have made it in one piece so far. So if I can do it, I feel like anybody can do it. And that's the main theme for me is, yes, uh, you know, it's possible. And with that, I will say health is one of my big focus areas in the work that I do. In fact, I work with a lot of mysterious persistent health challenges that the traditional system is not able to Mm -hmm. figure out. That's one of my forte. And I've been doing that for more than 15 years now. I completely enjoy it. And, and from my own experience, I've been my own guinea pig too. Mm -hmm. I've cleaned out a lot of my own. (laughs) So I don't have the asthma bronchitis anymore. I don't have the migraines anymore. I don't have weight issues anymore. I've overcome a lot of food sensitivities and inflammation. I mean, I have even been able to overcome the whiplash that I had from an auto accident, literally like in the day. So it, it was just like all of these things. So while I saw transformation happening for my clients, I have experienced it myself too, because then I can talk about it and I know my system works, right? So that's one piece. And then the other piece that I am equally passionate about is the work I do with land and buildings, clearing negative energy, restoring the glory to the land, letting go of baggage in the properties so people feel safe again, communication opens up, creativity. It's like all, I mean, land is a whole different species. I will say there's no resistance. There's no uh, condition. (laughs) There's nothing, right? We are on a roll. I mean, I love working with people too. It just takes a bit longer, but with land, it's almost instant. And that's what I really love. And along the way, I've also had some gifts come by. I channel uh, a few different products and all of that. So there's a lot more that has come over these years. And everything I do is personalized, customized for people. Your story is like, like, as you were speaking, I'm having all these like, wow, wow, wow. Like, there's so much that you have been through as far as like you were saying your health and finding that self-acceptance and you're calling it hell on steroids and that is kind of like for some people when they heard heard you say that because I know when I heard you say that it's like yeah that's like the last three years is kind of for a lot of people yeah been that hell on steroids and I love that you were saying how you are super passionate right now about and have been passionate about healing a different way and I would love for you to speak on that because I, I think so many people could use this. Yeah, absolutely. And again, the biggest motivation or the, the switch for that was my own health and what my mom went through, right? And I honor the traditional system for what it does. But what I have found with the people that have come to me is they have felt like a guinea pig. They have felt like they have been tested way too many times with too many different things and they've not really made progress. So it's almost like, it's not just that they're feeling stuck. They feel like they've been going backwards. And because of that, there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of overwhelm. And most people, when they come to me, they're in this place of mystery with their body. They're like, I can't figure this thing out. This puzzle is too much for me to handle. And of course they will accept the fact that They have not had a good relationship with their body. It's been giving them trouble for a long time. They have fought it. They have tried to do stuff. They've tried different modalities. So that's where typically people will come. And I am very grateful for the fact that I can connect with anybody's energy anywhere on the planet, right? I've worked with clients internationally. 
And all I need is a name and I can connect with that person. I can tune into their energies. I can scan for what's going on. So, so as a medical intuitive, which is my official term for what I do, you know, if a title helps, that is the ability, or I would like to call it the art and science of energetically tuning into somebody's Mm -hmm. system, finding out what's working, what's not working, and what are the pieces that are out of alignment, out of sync, because of which the body is facing so many challenges, right? So we look at physical body, we look at emotional body, we look at the energy body, we look at everything. It's not just one thing. I wish it was just one thing, right. much simpler beings, but <laughs> we were not made that way, you know? And the other thing too, is we come with all this stuff from the ancestry, not just this lifetime, but multiple lifetimes. So ta-da, right? So we are way more complicated than we know. And then mm-hmm. we have other lifetimes that we have been through. Most of us know we're not, this is not our first, first round here on planet earth. So because of that, there's all this baggage, mm-hmm. right? And then some things have been handed down through the DNA. Some things we have brought out, whether it's emotions, experiences, trauma, you call it whatever, all those experiences are stored in the body, whether we like it or not, whether we believe in it or, or not is all secondary, but it's there. Right. And so when we look at all of that and start cleaning up that emotional, energetic baggage, Mm -hmm. I'm simplifying it, actually oversimplifying it, (laughs) but (laughs) that's how it works. So when we clean up that emotional, energetic baggage, the body will start to heal, right? And for most people, it's often that reconnection with their body, which they have no clue how that works. And I, I mean, I can talk about it all day, all night, because that is where I was till I was woken up to it. And then I was on this whole spiritual path for a, such a long time. And every time my body would come in the way, it would halt my progress. It would just not let me move forward. And the more I resisted it, the worse it got. So at one point I said, oh, so I have to handle this body. Oh, I have to heal this thing. Otherwise I can't go forward. So that was one of my big aha moments, as I like to call it. So that's a big piece of my work too, is helping people reconnect with their body. Mm -hmm. that one's huge that one's huge that was like the game changer for me like I so disassociated with my body I was like I say I was like across the world in another planet like gone like I was just focused living on autopilot just going through the motions and that reconnection with my body it's like it's almost so hard to explain yes Absolutely. And that's what it is. And that's what will really accelerate the healing because the way I look at it is the body is the container. If you want to compare it to the car, I love this comparison, how the body, how the engine, how the physical parts of the car are maintained Mm -hmm. is going to determine how far and how well it's going to go. Same thing with the body too. I'm not talking about a bikini body. I'm not talking about, you know, all those muscles and packs. (laughs) I don't have any of that, but I'm very happy in my body, you know? (laughs) So what I'm trying to say is, is that vibrancy. It's that health that feels good. And you feel like, oh, okay, this is a container I can handle. Mm -hmm. I I love being in this container. Yeah, sometimes I wish I was a little taller. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Well, a little bit late for that. But what I'm trying to say is, We all have things we would like to change, but the moment we accept where we are, so much easier to work through. Mm -hmm. And when this connection opens up, I also do a lot of work with food and nutrition. I scan for people's food sensitivities, vitamin deficiencies, and all of that stuff because we are what we eat, right? So there's a lot of focus on the physical body, healing what's going on at the physical level, super important for sure. I do look at all of that. And at the same time, I bring in a lot of the energetic stuff Mm -hmm. Because when it's cleared in the energy body, much, much easier to just transmute stuff. I'm sure this is not new for you. Yeah, I (laughs) love this, like finding this like way of healing myself, like knowing that I have these tools that I could use to like come back into my body and to like love on my body and heal myself. Like it was all energetic because I was doing the healthy eating. I was looking outside Mm -hmm. of myself for like, save me, help me. What can I do? But it literally was not until I decided to like go inside and start, like you were saying, 
it's like renovating <laughs> like <laughs> exactly yeah. right on and so even with the energetic piece again early lessons right so when i was in the medical intuitive training for 12 15 years ago it everything was on the phone and people would bring case studies and share what's going on and i would feel it in my body mm-hmm. somebody's talking about pain in the liver and my liver would hurt and i went um this ain't going to work because I won't make it long if I start picking up all of this. So very, very early, I had this need to figure out a way to clean my boundaries, to keep my energy boundaries strong and uh, not get like sucked in because I was constantly tired and fatigued and I would go to a new place. I would feel like the balloon just got bust and I was going, but I didn't realize what was happening till I started doing this course. Then I realized, oh, so I'm being the sponge here. Mm. So that's when I started figuring out, I mean, there's really very little out there to help with that. So I had to figure out how to clean up my energy space, how to set up these stronger boundaries and still come from a place of, you know, compassion Mm. and empathy that doesn't go away anywhere. I mean, it's kind of hardwired, so to speak, but it's important to keep those boundaries. And as I put all of these different facets together, that's when one of my values, fierce compassion, really came forth because what I see as possible for my people is non-negotiable. So I'm very fierce about it. I can push my people a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I don't do band-aids. I'm not fluff. I'm not fuzzy. I'm not that kind of like, oh, you know, never mind. Some, no, you're not going to get that from me. I'm like, okay, let's get, let's get to work. Let's mm-hmm. dust this out. Let's clean this out. And, but at the same time, I come from a very caring, compassionate, and I provide that safe container for people mm-hmm. to go through what they need to go through. At the same time, it's non-negotiable because mm-hmm. what I see is possible is non-negotiable. Yeah. Right. So that's where that came through. And when I first shared the work I do with land and buildings, I'm digressing a little bit. I'll come back. When I shared it with one of my mentors, she said, oh, so you're the galactic vacuum cleaner. And I'm like, what? (laughs) That really like took me, right? It was like, I mean, I am very organized. I like things being clean. Don't get me wrong. But I didn't know if I wanted to be called a vacuum cleaner (laughs) myself. (laughs) It took me a while to digest that. But then I realized, that's what I'm actually doing. Mm -hmm. And whether it's people or land, I'm cleaning up. So sometimes it's turbo cleaning, sometimes it's gentle cleaning, Mm -hmm. but it's still quite the cleanse. So then I kind of made peace with that. And I'm now fine. I don't officially use it as my (laughs) title, but I do talk about it. I love it. So that was one of the pieces. So the energetics really got very important. That's how I brought that in. And then emotions is another piece that's huge because for most of us, it feels like 80% of our life is just run by emotions, whether it's ours or somebody else's, right? Although it's one of the many components, but it's like up in the face for most of us. So it's like, feels like the 80% because it's right up here. Mm -hmm. So then I started working with emotions and kind of starting to kind of detangle, oh, what's mine? What's somebody else's? And where is all this coming from? So I have very specific exercises that I teach for handling different emotions because everybody has different ones Mm -hmm. and the intensity is different yeah and sometimes you know it it may look disconnected but they're not (laughs) so it's all this beautiful world of emotions that is quite the roller coaster unless we know what to do with it and how to handle it so emotions is another big piece and I'm also big into vision and the why and all of those aspects, because for me, it's about the inner spark, right? It's the motivation. Why do we do what we do and why not? And if we don't have that inner spark, we're not going to go far. Mm. I've found that for myself too. And it doesn't matter how big or small those goals are. So that's another piece I help people kind of really get some clarity on is why do you even want to do any of this? Or why do you want to heal? Why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want to even... So the reason I bring that up is Whenever I've had a very clear why, I've just been on the go and I've had the fire. And the moment it's done, if I don't have something to keep me going, I'm already fizzed out. So that dip happens when we don't have that guiding light, so to yep. speak. And I feel like that dip even happens when you have the guiding light, but you stay down a lot less. Like it's not, you don't, you're not there long. And I always say like your why has to make you basically almost cry like it has to be like it has to tug at your emotions and it has to be big enough to keep you going on those days that 
on those days that are really hard and yeah. all the things you were talking about about clearing the energetic body about what you're putting into your body about your emotions your physical I mean it's all like all tied together but if like the person that is listening to this today they're like I'm, under, I'm hearing you. Like, I'm feeling like I need a little bit of that renovation. It's like, where, <laughs> where would I even begin? Like if I wanted to just like tiptoe into like this. Right. So there are a few starting points. And uh, before I even get there, let me share my big why a little bit and then yes, I'll jump yes, right in. Yes. So my big why that drives everything that I do is healthy people plus happy homes equals heavenly planet. Mm -hmm. So that's my big why. And so everything that I do is driven by that. There are smaller whys that I do need because mm -hmm. this is too big sometimes for me to hold on to. And I kind of like, uh, I'll feel that gap sometimes, but I have a lot of smaller ones that feed into that. Mm -hmm. And that really helps me to keep going, right? So now coming back to your question on starting points, I would say no matter where we are on our journey, Starting with the physical body is definitely step one. Mm. It's the foundation. It's the, it's like the building. You want to build a building, awesome. But if the foundation is shaky, it's not going to hold much or take much. So it, the foundation is like the physical body. Mm. So reconnecting with the body and healing the physical body is for me, step number one. And one of the easiest ways, I will again say that from my experience is to really get grounded, get connected with the earth, connecting with those earth energies, and then bringing those energies back. I have a free guided meditation on my website that is exactly handholds this process in a very simplistic way that people can absolutely grab. And it's meant to be an outline. It's meant to be a starting point. I always tell my people, listen to it a few times and then make it your own. This is meant to get you started. It's not to hold you back. So grounding is the most important thing because for most of us, we love being up here mm -hmm. because it's light. It's nice. You don't have to worry about the body and you're getting all these intuitive hits and downloads and you're like, you're on a rocket, but it's only up here. Mm -hmm. Right. But in order for that to kind of go through and translate into this world that we live in, this beautiful, lovely world that we live in, it needs to go down mm -hmm. and it cannot be uh, processed through the rest of the body if we are not grounded. Mm -hmm. So the connection to the body and grounding kind of go hand in hand. They're very, they're two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. You need one to do the other. So you cannot do one without the other. I cannot just say, oh, I'm going to connect with my body and disconnect from the <laughs> earth. Uh, I'm not going far with that. Or I don't care about my body, but I'm connecting with the earth. Mm -mm. That is not going to work either. So I've tried it. Trust me. I've been through all of this. Experimentation has been done. I have been the guinea pig. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I've tried way too many times. And I can say that I can save you a ton of time, frustration, and resources. Just get the body <laughs> in order. You know, so that might be the hardest thing for most people. I get it. I understand. But that is the starting point. Like I said, unless we build a foundation, the building is not going to stay. So that is the most fundamental piece. Yeah, the meditation is a great way to start. And I also offer free sessions for people to kind of understand where they are and what they can do to get started. I don't charge for those sessions. It, it's available. The link is on my website. People can just book some time with me if that's what they're called to. Because I understand if you want to try something new, you want to get a taste of it, you want to get a feel before we jump in. Absolutely. And for a lot of people, that one session does so much that they're mm -hmm. like, okay, I think I'm off to the races. And sure. You know, <laughs> off you go. Because for me, empowerment is another one of those values where that is what I want. You know, the ripple effect where I'm enabling somebody and they go do their thing. That's the ripple effect that I'm after. So Oh, that word speaks to my heart. Like lately, that word has been like, I feel it in my own self, like the work that I've done for myself. That's all it started as that work for, like you're saying that work for yourself Yeah, has been like such a huge ripple effect in my life. And it's still it's happening right before my eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it is just mind blowing. Yes. Like the ripple effect of what happens when you decide to shift yourself. Mm -hmm. When you make that decision to shift your internal world and like you were saying, that foundation, your body, your physical body, everything else starts to almost fall into place with a lot more ease. I know you're saying it's, it's, we're making it sound easier <laughs> than it is. <laughs> and so I, I want to say that too. It is like, 
you have to do the work you have to but that ripple effect is so huge yeah absolutely and that is why uh, you know reaching out and getting support has been a big part of my life i mean initially when i got trained as a medical intuitive i thought oh i can do all my stuff myself going forward i don't need anybody else uh, da, 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 da. so i almost spent 5 years trying to like stumble around and nothing much was happening but why because i was able to help other people but for myself it was like mm, what am i missing here so it's called blind spot for a reason right we don't see our blind spots mm-hmm. and they're called so so that is when it really woke me up to the fact that i can either save time or i can save resources for me time is what i picked to save because i cannot get that back you can always make the money back you know i mean but it's the time you don't get that back what's gone is gone so that's when from literally from then on up until now i always have had mentors i've always had somebody that i go to i lean on and i say hey this is your ex- area of expertise give me the shortcut give me the uh, the strategy <laughs> the tool or at least tell me i'm not going bonkers right yes so- i say like you can't see the foam like when you're drinking coffee you can't see the foam on your face like you could be walking around all day with stuff in your teeth foam on your face but you need that person who's like able to be that mirror for you and that is what yeah that's so I'm so thankful that you're saying like get support because at the end of the day we're in it together yeah exactly and it becomes more important now with everything else that's going on than anything else because we are so much more isolated we are so much more disconnected and well uh while it can be used as an opportunity to go inward not everybody is ready for that mm. so it's good to g- get a hand that you can say all right so i am being held and at the same time i can dive deep mm-hmm. yeah, but that is super important and i'm seeing that even in my own life and even in some of the clients that i've been working with makes a huge difference because so much more isolation so much more disconnect and so much more stress i mean talk about stress you know on an exponential mm-hmm. level it's like I don't even you know want to go there right now but we all know what that is right so it's like the monster in the room kind of thing uh, the is. invisible monster in the room and at some point I almost want to say the word stress sounds like a cliche to me because it's like fashionable to be stressed it's <laughs> it's except you're supposed to be stressed I'm like going what oh yeah it's normal you know that's how life is supposed to be but you can do something about it oh really no 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 you cannot do anything it's supposed to... no 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 so that's where I'm saying that I want to challenge that state of school yeah it's increased it's become more difficult but there's a way out mm-hmm. and that's that grounding that you were talking about earlier that first baby step of like grounding yourself to the earth like feeling yourself just in that present moment and I know that people probably I talk about this a lot on the show as far as like being in the present moment and it sounds too simple and almost too good to be true I think is right. what people think yeah after a point it becomes your natural state and you're floating and just riding that wave and people around are like how do you do that uh, it's not even supposed to be that way and it's not possible i've tried yeah because it takes work mm. it's a very conscious very deliberate work to do and yep. and it it requires you to walk the fire it requires you to get uncomfortable it requires you to accept the parts of you that you did not even want to see in the first place forget about acknowledging it Mm-hmm. So all of that needs to come together. Yeah. Because if say like you were saying I love that example you gave the the foam on your mouth and if somebody were to hold that and or say hey there's foam you should be able to laugh at it and not get like all angry frustrated and lose it in the moment like how did that happen to me? Like, oh ha ha yeah let's just wipe that down what's next? Right? I mean it's it's not easy to do that. It's easier to get upset. Mm-hmm. Because we are used to being perfectionists and I am a recovering perfectionist myself. I can speak to that like so much because there's always a reason we are not ready there's oh that i that needs to be dotted the t that needs to be crossed and oh i just don't look presentable oh this oh, oh my gosh i mean one of my websites one of the versions hardly even made it to light of day because i just didn't feel ready right so now i've completely shifted from this whole perfectionism thing to excellence because when i give it my all when i give it my 100% 200% it is going to turn out pretty dang good mm-hmm. we're not meant to be perfectionists in the first place and what really inspired me and kind of really burst this open hopefully it'll help other people is mm-hmm. when you look at nature it's there's no perfection nature doesn't say oh this tree gets more sunlight <laughs> because it's nicely perfect 
and this tree doesn't get any at all because it's growing somewhere else or like slanted or it's crooked. Nature does not discriminate right and it doesn't say oh this place gets more rain because it's all beautiful and the other one doesn't because it's like eh, it doesn't look all that pretty i mean there's no such discrimination going on so that was the big moment for me when i realized oh you know it was like i, mean, I don't even have a word for that but that was really opened me up to this whole letting go of perfection and working towards excellence because that that brings so much harmony it brings so much balance and I'm all about that at the end of the day. While I focus on health, I focus on land, and I focus on a few things. For me, it's about harmony and balance in all areas of life because each one impacts the other. We can ever find, like that question that just popped in my mind is, do you think we could ever find balance? Do, do you think that's possible? Oh, like yeah. Balance? Yes. yes, absolutely. Because it's about the law of averages, right? So I'll give a very simple way of explaining that, right? So if you were to score the different areas of life, and let's say one is at a top 10, some of us do have some areas that are really doing great. And then some might be at zero or one. And this is the typical scenario when people come to me. And a lot of times outside looks really awesome. It's the inside that's not doing all that great. We'll leave it at that. So when we start working on those areas, which we have not wanted to look at before, it could be health for some people. It could be relationship for somebody else. It could be purpose for a lot of people. Oh my God, we could talk about purpose on another day. But what I'm saying is that is one of the areas where people are like, really like, I know I'm here for a bigger reason, but I have no clue. But that is what feeds the soul. It nourishes you know, the spark. So when you start working on those, the numbers will start to go up. Mm -hmm. Something is already doing good. So when, when we talk about average, so the average of zero and 10 is going to be a five. Yeah. But when it, it starts to become four and then you still have a 10, your number is already up at seven. And as you continue the work, the numbers will go up and you will start. So instead of like feeling like you're in a roller coaster, though, I, I would say I feel like when I compare myself, I feel like I'm being in a washing machine, right? <laughs> Passed around, like that's what life feels like, right? And then after a while, it's like, oh yeah, I am in a washing machine, but I can actually balance. Mm -hmm. I'm not losing it and I'm not falling every time. I'm kind of enjoying that, whatever that is you're riding the wave rather than you're being tossed in the wave. There's a difference between the two. Yes. And when you have ride that wave, that's the balance I'm talking mm -hmm. about. The wave doesn't go away. Craziness around you is not going to go no. away. And the world is not going to stop and change for us. But how we handle, how we get triggered and how we balance mm -hmm. and how we react, right? That's the inner balance. That's what I call the um, inner power, inner calm. And that's when I came up with this term, uh, unshakable confidence that I have the trademark on. So as you build your foundation, as you get all the pillars together, there's a whole series of steps that I talk about that brings in inner spark. It brings in connection to the divine and to the earth. And that brings certainty, that brings safety, mm -hmm. trust, clarity. And then that makes you take action. Then there is alignment. So all these are ingredients in that recipe. And when all of that comes together, you get balance right and with balance comes inner peace and then you yeah. become unshakable so for me unshakable is the inside out it's not like the outside and there's a difference between unstoppable and unshakable i like unshakable a lot more because the word can be like mm -hmm. going everywhere and i can stand there and go oh all right okay <laughs> good i can do that now i could not do that before right yes. so it's a long I, answer but i love the i love it what you were saying the way to describe balance because lately I've been thinking like sometimes I don't feel balanced with my work and my life right because but I love the way you took balance and you said like it's an internal calm it's like that no matter what is going on you are in the washing machine you're not like topsy-turvy you're just kind of like going with it you're kind of dancing yeah exactly yeah. And so you don't necessarily need to have that because sometimes I think as women we feel like we need to be like the traditional of definition for balance in all areas need to be the exact same 10 10 10 10 and that is that perfectionism again right exactly right on you hit it you hit it on the head that is what it is it's again perf and we know at a subconscious level that a 10 on 10 in every area is not possible so we go oh okay that's not going to happen 
oh, I must have done this, da 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 da, da. So that starts again, mm-hmm. right? I like to compare the mind to a search engine, right? So we give it a good question, we get good answers. We mm-hmm. give it a not so good question, we get not so good answers. And I've tested this so many times. How come I'm so smart? Oh, da 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 da. How come I'm so stupid? Evidence for that too. Oh, dang it. I am the one who asked both questions, right? <laughs> It's the same thing. Why is this not working? Oh, of course, the brain will say, oh, this is because you did this wrong. You didn't do that. You didn't reach out to that person. You didn't talk here. You didn't do all of this. So whereas when you flip that question and say, what can I do better next time? The brain will actually go quiet for some time because it's like it's new. Oh, geez, I have to answer this in a different way. So you, can, you will be able to quieten the mind a little bit when you ask these pattern interrupt questions. That's what I, I've just read. I've, been referring to them as those because it's the same thing asked in a different way but it completely shifts the energy right and then i've also been studying the frequency or the vibration of words that we use being very conscious being very deliberate to go oh this made me feel this way oh that word made me feel that way so when we even change some of the questions uh, that we ask ourselves then it's like oh I've literally seen my brain stop, like it was going 100 miles per hour, you know, like driving me crazy, kind of putting me in a tizzy. And then all of a sudden it's like, it's just calming down. It's just stopping because I've given it a very different question. And it's like, oh, this is new. Wait a minute. I need some time to process this thing, right? It just literally stops and you go, oh, that feels nice. (laughs) It doesn't happen often. But you have a question that you go to for that pattern interrupt like for me it's like I ask myself like that moment of overwhelm that moment of like just in it like I ask myself what is most important in this moment like that will shift me like that's my shifter and do you have like a shifter like that for you question that you ask yourself that helps that brain just like <laughs> I, do, I have a few but one of them is especially if it's munching on the same thing like 50 times I will say hey we already talked about this <laughs> and suddenly it'll be like it starts to calm down because that's true you cannot prove me wrong I love that question it just brought me back to like just the just yesterday I something came up for me that was like a trigger with my husband like he was eating sweets and it was his birthday yesterday and I always am like the health conscious person so I'm like why are you doing that and then I like caught myself and I'm like didn't we like figure this out? It's not your problem. Like he can eat what he wants. It's his birthday. Like it was like kind of the same thing. It's like, it's like the same thing. It's that question that you have to come back to and ask yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. In fact, on that note, I want to give people a little tip, especially if they're not able to sleep right in the Mm -hmm. night. Uh, they have like all these to-dos that are like churning and churning or things that did not get done today, things that should happen tomorrow and maybe the next week and the next year and the next life. You know, you're planning all of this life. I mean, you never know. Yeah, because this life, you didn't have a chance. In fact, if you ask me, there would be things like, yeah, there are some things I would plan for next life because I didn't get a chance to do it now. So sure. So anyway, coming back to the point, uh, I would say keep a piece of paper and pen, not a phone or a computer or something, but an actual piece of paper and a pen and write down everything it comes. There's a power to the writing. Typing doesn't do it any fun at all. But when you start writing down, you're literally purging. Just like the brain loves to go back again and again, you can say, hey, I already wrote that down. (laughs) And you will be amazed because it will actually start coming down and you might be able to sleep. Mm -hmm. Uh, it has this is a tip I share with a lot of my people and when they try it they realize it actually works yeah absolutely because yeah like you said it like when you you go all day long and then when you're like ready to relax ready to go to sleep you think you're like I'm ready your brain (laughs) is like no you're not there's so much to do right so having that piece of paper and that pen and not your phone I think is so handy because I feel like that's the time I get some of my best downloads is like my brain wants to do work for some reason. It like wants to, like that's the time it chooses. And so I think that's such a valuable thing to share with our yeah. listeners. Like, yeah, and I would say, really stress on writing because there is a lot of energy. And when you write, you're connecting to that part of you when you write down. Mm-hmm. It, you cannot translate that when you type it or when you, 
even if you voice record it, it's okay, you could, but I'm all about staying away from electronics. I, EMF is another of my topics that I could go on and on forever, but I would say definitely no electronics five feet from you when you're going to sleep. So if you're following that rule, paper and pen is really going to be it's useful. Really, really useful. Oh my gosh, you said no electronics five feet. Yeah, when you sleep, because it's going to interfere with your sleep. It is going to interfere with the body's ability to relax. Wow. It is bombarded with those radiations, right? I mean, oh my gosh. So I like to listen to like, calm relaxing music to help me sleep and get like in that sleep state but my stuff are not five feet away so that just made me think like I need to move those away from like right next to my bed right and in fact I like the traditional alarm clocks over the phone because again we get on the phone or we kind of will just start checking stuff on the phone Mm -hmm. if it's nearby right it's not meant to be like that and we can't go to sleep either. Then we start going back on the phone again. So it's like, it's a good tool with all due respect, but mm-hmm. it doesn't need to take over everything. Mm-hmm. And, and the way we are wired, the way we live, it, it, it is hard to put it down. I get it. I understand it. But sleep is a time I would say, you know, it needs to kind of, and definitely, you know, I, I don't recommend people putting like the laptops or iPads or anything on their body when they're mm-hmm. watching stuff while going to bed please keep something in between that can neutralize that EMF because it's literally, you know, plugging into the body, right? Wow. Because those ions are very attractive. The body ions are very attractive for the electronics. It's like the opposites, but it's not doing us any good. It's actually pulling out stuff from- Or energy. Like you were talking earlier about the the body, the physical body be the first thing that you want to work on, but also we're an energy body. So in our phone, same thing. And so when you're saying like, it takes, it's basically sucking your energy. Like I could totally see how that could be totally related. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, when I do home makeovers and stuff like that, I'm also watching for, you know, these electronics, these different things in different parts of the house. And especially kids are super, super sensitive, though they are more hooked on to these devices than they've ever been. But I will say this from, you know, a lot of love and compassion, they are the most sensitive. So we need to really take care of them and keep some of these things away, especially when they're sleeping and And I know a lot of us live in smaller spaces and we have limitations on where we can put one. Just turn off some of those things. If you have a TV in the bedroom, turn it off. You have a Wi-Fi router, turn it off. You have a printer, turn it off. You have a laptop, shut it down. (laughs) So let them rest. So can you. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Wow. That is huge. That is huge. Yeah. Because sleep is so important because that's what I think a lot of us are lacking. Like earlier, I was talking about that stagnation, like that feeling of fatigue, that feeling of like stuckness. That could be something that could totally like help us all. It's just like, yeah. turn off your computer. Like, I don't remember the last time I turned off, off my computer. Like it's, yeah. it goes to sleep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so that was like a, wow, that's a big aha moment for me. And I'll be taking that one and putting it in my bag of tools. <laughs> so thank you. Sure, you're welcome. (laughs) We can even focus even specifically on some of the pieces to do at home to kind of help, you know, clear that stagnation out because we're stuck at home, let's face it. So uh, just changing a few arrangements, just bringing a few things, taking some stuff out, moving things around. And I work with a lot of small spaces and no challenge can be kind of just left alone. We can always look at some stuff. So there will be ways to kind of work with it. This conversation, I feel like it's so like, it's all, it's all intertwined. Like, I know it all seems different. Yeah. Especially to people that probably haven't stepped into this world yet, that it seems like a lot, but it all is tied together, right? Like the space that you're in, your physical body yeah. and your emotions, your sleep, you, like all of it is kind of tied together. Right, right. And that is why I call them the five pillars of unshakable confidence. You need all these pillars lined up and that's the foundation. Mm -hmm. And then you build whatever you want on it called life. It's going to be unshakable. Mm -hmm. But the foundation, the pillars are not there or they're shaky. Mm. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Oh my Mm -hmm. gosh. Well, tell us where we can find you, where the listeners can go celebrate you. They can get on that free call with you like 
also where they can get that meditation. I will put that in the show notes as well. But yeah, share that with us. As soon as you go to my website, right on the header, there is a place for people to just put in their email. They can download the meditation audios right then and there. So there are three audios they will get. Okay. One is an introduction to the grounding because it's new for a lot of people. So I've explained a little bit. And then the second track is the actual grounding process. Mm -hmm. so that way they don't have to listen to the whole thing every time. And then the third audio is about balancing the elementals and also balancing the masculine and feminine energies that's there in each and every one of us. So all these three audios, you will get access to them as soon as you sign up. And that will be on my website, archanasham.com. I'll let you put that in the notes because otherwise I'll be spelling yes. and having too much fun with it. So that's, that's <laughs> such a gift. That's such a gift. Thank you. Sure. So that's the audio. And then right when you scroll down a little bit, there are several sections or at least a couple places where there is a link to schedule a free breakthrough session with me. Uh, you can take the link right off there. It'll open a little pop-up. It'll show you the available times. You can pick and schedule. You will get a Zoom link right sent to your email that you signed up with. Now, the thing for me is the privacy of these sessions are super important. So every session gets its own Zoom ID. So there's no mistake. Nobody's going to show up in somebody else's. Mm -hmm session that is very important in my work yeah. for me because of the stuff that people share whether it doesn't even matter if it's a free session or uh, a deeper work I do with my clients the information that comes through is something super sacred yes. and I don't need anybody else in the room right so it's so that's why I made sure that each session is separate there are links on my website to get there if you want to directly link to that that would be on a website called meetme.so so meetme.so, like so, forward slash book your call. So that will also take you to my scheduler. Uh, it's the same link, whether you come from the website or uh, come from this link. And though that will be the best way to get a hold of me. I always like to talk to people. I like to connect with people uh, so I can understand what is going on. What is their situation? What are they dealing with? And then understand what is their desired state. So then I can come up with a plan to bridge that gap. And I will use this as an opportunity to say that I have had a career in IT for 20 years. So that is the exact same role I did even over there. I was the bridge between IT and business. I was a business analyst. So the role as a bridge continues, but at a much deeper, more impactful level, because getting you from your current state to your desired state and helping you being the bridge and holding your hand, that's something I absolutely love to do. So and changing lives. Wow. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you for the audios and for giving us the information to connect with you. Do you have anything on your heart right now that you feel called to share with the moms and the women that are listening today? They got so much value. We got so much value. I got so much value from this, but if there's anything on your heart that you feel called to share. Sure. And of course, before I even go there, I do want to thank you too. It's been such an honor, such a pleasure connecting with you, talking to you. I've totally enjoyed this conversation. It's like we've been on a roll. I feel like we could go on for the next two yeah. days if we wanted to. We would need some <laughs> bio breaks, but I think we could still keep going. It's been so much fun. <laughs> so thank you for that. It's been really uh, amazing to be here. The one that comes up, especially for us women and moms and all of that, I, I would like to invite more and more of us to start filling up our own cups. And this is not from an ego or a selfish point of view, but more from the ability to give so much more. So think of it like a bank account. That's, I like to draw some comparisons. So think of a bank account. So the more there is a deposit, it's easier to draw out of it. But if we don't deposit enough and we're only drawing from it, there's only so much we can draw. As folks that have been wired and trained, and we've looked at our moms and their moms just going through life, just giving, giving, giving without receiving support, without receiving anything back. The one thing I will say is nourish yourself, support yourself, fill up your own cup, give yourself some love too. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Give yourself a hug every once in a while and say, hey, you're amazing. You don't always get it from the outside. It's okay to give yourself a hug yes. and say, I love you. Because you're so worth it and you matter. So see, I love you to yourself. So the next time you look in the mirror, let that perfectionist go for a few seconds and say, I love you. A huge 
That one's a game changer. That was a practice that I 100% and on board with and giving yourself that love and pouring from the overflow, having so much full cup. Like, yeah, then like you're you not have- worried what's going to happen on the next turn, right? It's like, hey, there's always more. There's always more. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.